A common question about thermal paste effectiveness has to do with type and application method. When I tested this out for myself, the results showed that it didn't really matter as long as you put enough on the CPU. However, many of you mad lads wanted to see what it would be like without any thermal paste at all. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. But before I start, I want you to pause this video right now and let me know in the comments what you expect to happen from this test. We're not gonna waste any time here. I started with a control test with Arctic MX4 thermal paste. My system was opened up on the table for maximum airflow. It's a Ryzen 7 3700X on a Gigabyte X570 motherboard, which is cooled by a Kraken X53 all-in-one cooler. Fans are set to normal in the BIOS. The first test was a simple 10 minute idle after startup coming in at 33.3 degrees Celsius average. Next was some light gaming of Rocket League. Two matches spanning about 15 minutes coming in at 51.3 degrees Celsius average. And finally, to stress the CPU a bit more, I did a custom five minute test using Cinebench R23 multi-core benchmark coming in at an average of 73.5 and a max of 75.8 degrees Celsius, which concludes the thermal testing as I didn't want to go too hard once we took the thermal paste off and it was dry. I was kind of worried that there might be an issue there. So I pulled back just a little bit, didn't go too hard, but it was time to remove the thermal paste. Aren't you forgetting something there, buddy? A little bit of that thermal paste. Come on. Come on. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Come on. Look at me. I'm dry. Come on. Just... I'm sorry. What? No. No! So, with the CPU cleaned and the cooler mounted, to say I wasn't a little worried, a little nervous, I'd be lying. Because I wasn't interested in going out having to buy new parts for my PC if anything were to break. And, alas, for you, and for science, I went ahead and turned on the machine. So our first benchmark again is idle for 10 minutes and immediately my fears had been assuaged with an average reading of 35.2 degrees, just about two degrees higher than with the paste. Next, we put a little bit of stress on the CPU with Rocket League again for two matches, which is about 15 minutes. Our average reading was 55.7 degrees. That's 4.4 degrees above our control. And the final test again, Cinebench R23 for five minutes with the multi-core benchmark. Our average temperature at 81.9 degrees and a max of 84.8 degrees, a difference of 8.8 .8 and nine degrees respectively. Surprised? I was for sure. I was also relieved because my computer didn't melt. And I honestly thought that there was going to be more issues. At least I thought it was gonna shut down for one. And perhaps I naively underestimated the power of that Kraken cooler and the amount of contact that it's still making with the CPU without any thermal compound there. And to give you a little more context, I also wanna look at the benchmark results from Cinebench. The pasted test resulted in a score of 12,402, and the dry test a score of 12,099. It's a marginal difference, and when compared to tests that others have done with this specific CPU, the Ryzen 3700X, you'll see that either score is pretty close to that. The ones I found are kind of in the middle of these two scores. And these differences are to be expected as the, the CPU gets closer to that thermal throttling limit. The higher the temps, we'll see a reduction in performance. And this is especially true with AMD CPUs making the best of their thermals to squeeze the most performance out as possible. They're already at the limit. So putting more stress on there is just gonna quickly pull it back with that thermal throttling. Looking at fan speed, it shows a slight difference as well. Average of 1830 for the pasted and 2003 for the dry. Nothing surprising as I was using a stock fan curve. The hotter it got, the faster the fans flew. That's all it was. But before you lazy builders get carried away with tossing out your thermal paste, I think it's important to keep in mind that these results 
They're with my CPU. It's very specific to this CPU, the 3700X. It's relatively light when it comes to power consumption with a TDP of 65 watts when compared to others in its class. It's less extreme when it comes to heat output. If this were to be tested with something like the 5000 series chips, like the 5800X, the 5900X or 5950X, or even its own series, its older brother, the 3800X, you would see more pronounced differences in those temperatures as those have a TDP above 100 watts. I think most of them are around 105 watts or that's what the rated TDP is, 105 watts. So that being said, we wouldn't know for sure without some extensive testing. But anyways, these results make me wonder, is thermal paste needed? It's only a bit warmer with regular use in gaming. Why bother? Well, the obvious answer to why you should bother is because it's insanely cheap. One tube can be bought for a few bucks and it lasts for years on the shelf. You've already spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your machine. No need for the extra wear just because you wanted to save $5. But the asterisk to that statement is if you're in a pinch, you don't have any thermal paste on hand and you just want to see the computer post like you're building it, you're installing windows or anything kind of benign and quick. It's not like it's a permanent thing. I don't see why this should be an issue for any short period of time. So yeah, I guess you don't really need thermal paste, at least not for my computer. But again, I can't stress enough, this is not an excuse to not use thermal paste. Use thermal paste. It's super cheap. It's super easy to use. And that's it. I just wanted to make a really quick video and test this theory out. So many of you commented about it. So I figured I'd give it a shot to see what would happen. So let me know if you were surprised by the results down in the comments below. And I just want to say thank you for the continued support. I really appreciate the comments. I honestly did not expect such positivity from the YouTube community. I get so many wonderful, positive comments and encouraging comments every single day, and I'm really grateful for it, truly. So with that, my name is Nick. This has been Tech Literate. Thank you for watching. Oh, there we go. Finally. Sweet, sweet relief. Yeah, there we go. Hey, he named the rest of me. Oh, hello. Oh, butter my biscuit. That's it, that's it, buddy. Oh, yeah. Happy, happy, happy.